Hey everyone, Ariel Adams here with the blog to watch. Please subscribe to our videos on YouTube and like this video if you find it useful. This is a review of the Halda Space Discovery. So Halda is a Swedish watch company that um, debuted a couple of years ago and to date they have two models. They have the Space Discovery and the Race Pilot, but both are essentially different takes on the same thing. So the Space Discovery was designed to be um, a watch useful in space that also had terrestrial uh, uh, purposes, right? So you have you have what's called modules, right? So you have an electronic computerized module and then a traditional um, mechanical movement module that goes into this this case. And so let's say you push down here and you, there's pushes here and you can pop it out. There it is. And here is the, um, the case. Now this case is made of steel. It's 45 millimeters wide. And when you want to pop in a different one of the modules, you just sort of stick it in there um, and, and there it goes, and it's nice and secure. Now, this particular module, the computer one, um, of course, is a lot more complicated, so I'll talk about it first. Um, there's a lot of features in here, and I'm not going to go over all of them. We'll discuss more of that in the review itself, but let me just say a few, few things first. This does not need to be charged. This isn't the type of thing where you put on a base and, and charge every night. It's designed to have a battery that you can replace, um, and even with constant use, it's supposed to last for about two years. Now, here's some of the things that it can do. So, first of all, you, you press the pusher here and it turns on. It has an automatic backlight and right here is a light sensor so it senses the ambient light so that it knows um, you know how bright it should be. So you push that again here you have the uh, the time uh, obviously it says Sweden we're not in Sweden um, and you can cycle through the different functions here. Um, so you have let's see here uh, here, here we go, the calendar, and you can see it has, you know, per the week, battery power, so 91% version of the software. You can, you know, you can s scroll through these various uh, function pieces of functionality. Uh, you saw chronograph, timer, uh, here's, of course, a um, uh, GM, GMT, so UTC, UTC, and then there's a, an alarm function, uh, a different type of alarm, uh, event logs, so all types of event logs and things like that that are useful when you're tracking various events. Um, I forget what this is. This has something to do with space time, I think. Um, countdown. Uh, I don't know what MET stands for. I'll, I'll cover that more, of course, in the review. Earth time. I like that because you could because the time and space actually can be different, so you can you see Earth time as well. Um, this is cool. It has an accelerometer in here, which, among other things, allows you to measure the g-forces you are experiencing. So it says lift off, which I think is pretty cool there, and then you have re-entry. Um, Geez. And so it has it has a lot of different cool functionality um, in this in what they call the, the space module. Can you use this on the ground? Sure. Um, but again, to s preserve battery life, it, it turns off after a little while. So you have to push a push or two to put it back on. Um, and, and I mean, this is just awesome. I mean, there's obviously a lot this can do um, if you're in space then I guess there's more things you can do than on Earth. And most of the time, people are probably going to want to use this, which is the, uh, the, the mechanical watch module. Now the mechanical watch module looks to be kind of just a standard three-hand movement with a date, but it's actually uh, interesting. There's an interesting story behind this movement. So let's look at the back here. Um, it does not look like a new movement. Uh, it's wonderfully finished and decorated and beautiful, but it does not have the architecture of a modern movement. And that's because it's not. If you see here, it says Anderson Geneve. That is Sven Anderson's uh, workshop, and he is a watchmaker and a restorer and a decorator, and he does a lot of work for brands, basically selling them um, restored new old stock movements. So this is actually a movement, I'm guessing, from the 70s, and this is a very rare movement. It is a, I, I believe it's an Edda movement, um, and it's a 36,000 uh, beats per hour movement. That's a 5 hertz movement versus your standard 4 hertz movement. Um, why is that important? Well, it, it allows the watch to retain higher accuracy over time, at least theoretically. And today there aren't that many 5 hertz uh, movements made. Seiko makes a few, but probably the most popular is the Zenith El Primero. But of course, that's a chronograph, and having a 5 hertz uh, movement makes more sense with a chronograph because you can time things a little bit more, um, not accurately, with a little bit more precision because you can get to that one-tenth of a second um, precision. So in a three-hand, um, these are, of course, much more rare. As far as I know, there are no three-hand 5 hertz movements made today. Um, so what's interesting is you have this cool Sven Anderson restored um, movement that they use in here. Um, Sven Anderson stuff is cool. And so that, this is kind of like a, a special neat touch that really 
wasn't something that people would have expected from a watch like this, but it's an interesting added element there. And so you can obviously um, just place this module right in there. And uh, I didn't size this bracelet yet, so let's put it on there. It snaps in. And then you can wear it. Now, here's the thing that's uh, not really an issue, but you can see that the lugs are very large. Because these are designed to be the pushers, it, it does kind of make it so it doesn't wrap as well around your wrist as possible. So I would say that this watch is probably a bit too big for my wrist. I do have you know wrists on the smaller side. You can see there how it does look a little bit on the large size. Um, I can typically wear a 45 millimeter watch fine, but the problem is just how far out this extends. So it doesn't it doesn't start to curve down until about right here. So you have a you have essentially what's a what is a very long watch, and that's that's fine. But again, you have to just uh, be cognizant of the fact that if you have smaller wrists and are sensitive to the size, that's something to be aware of. If you have larger wrists, you're you're really not going to have a problem um, at all. So each of the space discoveries comes with uh, both modules. It also comes with some extra straps. And the straps um, are like, there's like a cool Velcro strap and one of them has like the space uh, space discovery kind of logo on there, which is neat. And you know, those are made to be used like over a space suit or over any other type of suit. But on the bracelet is probably what most people are gonna wear it on because it's probably the most attractive. Um, this is also a highly limited edition watch. Only 128 of the space discoveries will ever be made. Um, of course, there's also the race pilot watch, which uses a similar technology and they'll probably come out with more, but it, it's neat to have this this type of exclusive watch with these unique features um, and it's really an interesting brand it's it's definitely not for everyone because there are there are quirks to it of course and of course this module is something which is neat but um, you know not everyone's gonna be able to use it so what I'm thinking is that people are gonna buy it are mostly gonna have this mechanical module in and have the electronic computer module to wear sometimes or play with or things like that or just know that it's cool to have and that's that's what I presume so again this is the Halda space discovery um, retail price is thirteen thousand two hundred dollars and you can see more on the blog to watch soon thanks <laughs>